This plant is a work of art. It's beautiful and bold. Echeveria agavoids is a succulent plant native to Mexico. There are many forms and varieties to Echeveria agavoids. They can vary in size from about 10 cm to 20. The height can vary too as some rosettes grow more open while others point their leaves upwards making them taller. Agavoids leaves are pretty similar across all of the varieties and forms. They tend to be fleshy, starting off wide and narrowing down to a sharp looking point. They kind of resemble agave leaves just a bit more chubby which earn Echeveria agavoids the nickname molded wax agave. Wax because they are mostly shiny and look like they have just been wax polished. This is where it gets interesting. Agavoid's color is superbly bright when stressed and offers a great range amongst the forms. Some have red tips, others red edges and tips and then there are those with fully red, pinkish or bronze color. There are so many variations. The main color is green or green grey. Echeveria agavoids likes a sunny position but also tolerates part shade and dappled light outdoors well. The downside of growing them in shade is lack of color, shape that is less compact and possibility of fungal disease attacking. These succulents are not good indoor plants and unless you have a giant sunny window, a sunroom or growing lights, they will likely die inside eventually. They will grow well in pots as well as frost free gardens. The bigger forms will benefit greatly from frequent repotting to fuel their growth and may suffer if kept in small pots for long periods. In the garden, plant where drainage is good, slope or raised beds are ideal. Agavoids can be a bit sensitive to overwatering and some forms and varieties are particularly prone to rot or other fungal disease. Not all of them though. Some are tough and very tolerant of rain and humidity and will happily grow outdoors even during wet weather. For instance, in my experience as a grower, the pink agavoids hybrid called Romeo is incredibly sensitive and needs a greenhouse to control watering. But the red one called Rubin is fairly tolerant and I've grown many hundreds of them outdoors without an issue. If you're growing in pots, it may be best to let the potting mix dry out completely between waterings. Providing enough light that will evaporate the excess water especially when it gets caught sitting in between the leaves and good quality well draining potting mix will minimize the rot danger significantly. In pots quality potting mix should be used. This will provide the right growing environment and nutrients for the plant. Somehow, it tends to be easier to grow Echeveria agavoids in the garden, though they will flourish when the soil is broken up prior to planting and a bit of potting mix work through for additional drainage. This allows the thin roots to spread and establish. Agavoids should tolerate temperatures well into the 40s, however, they will not tolerate being exposed to direct sun at those temperatures. They are likely to suffer sunburn and can even die if left out in the sun during heat waves, especially when in pots. If you're expecting hot spells, either move pots into shade for the duration or build a simple shelter over them using shade cloth. When it comes to cold, some Echeveria agavoids varieties are said to be frost tolerant to about minus 5 degrees Celsius, but any prolonged frost or snow is very likely to cause burns or death. There are varieties that will not tolerate any frost exposure and can die even if light frost settles on them. It's best to be cautious and not expose these succulents to frost or snow. A frost cloth or a move under a tree should be enough when expecting light frosts. Echeveria agavoids can be propagated from offsets, leaves and seeds. The tricky part is that some forms mostly grow as solitary rosettes and do not produce many offsets while others grow a decent number. The same applies to leaves. There are agavoids forms and variants that have real trouble growing from leaf while others will have a good 90% success rate. Seed propagation can be quite good if you're patient and can devote a bit of time to the seedlings. It can take well over a year or two, depending on your climate, to get from seed to a decent sized plant. 
the best way to propagate offsets is to wait until they are big enough and have a stalk. Some offsets can grow very close to the stem and between leaves. This makes them hard to separate. But in time they will grow away from the stalk and it will be possible to either pull or cut them off. Pulling may be better as many of these offsets will have roots already which will help with getting established in their new home. But if there's too much resistance, cutting them will be best. It can be quite easy to damage too many leaves if you force them. Regardless of which way you decide to separate, you'll need to leave the offsets to dry for a minimum of 24 hours in order for the wound to heal. Fresh wounds make it easier for harmful bacteria or fungus to get into the plant. Before you put up, clean off all the dried and damaged leaves and check for mealybugs. Bigger offsets like this can go straight in the garden or into a pot. Succulent potting mix should be used when growing in pots. Make a hole in the center for the roots and stalk. Pat down the potting mix once the cutting is in. If the weather is quite hot, keep in morning sun afternoon shade position until established. Many of the chunkier varieties can be difficult to propagate from leaves simply because it is very hard to take the leaf off in one piece. They tend to break easily and broken leaves rarely grow a leaf baby. If you do manage to separate a few, they can then be placed in a tray with or without potting mix in a dry bright spot until new leaves start to emerge. As I mentioned earlier, many forms will not grow well from leaf either. If it doesn't work out, you can always go down the beheading or topping road where the top of the rosette is removed. New heads will then start growing at the cut point eventually. The best way to top Echeveria agaboids is to use a thin string such as fishing line or tooth floss. Because of the way the leaves grow, it may be difficult to just cut the top with scissors. The top can be planted after the wound has healed and the bottom will grow new offsets. Any propagation or topping should be done during the growing season, which can be different depending on where in the world you are. I usually do all my agavoids propagation in mid-spring. I have some bad news. Echeveria agavoids is prone to pretty much every succulent pest there is. They can get attacked by small and bigger animals as well. Even my chickens once pecked an agavoid to pieces. Some of the worst pests are mealybugs, both root and leaf, aphids, mostly at flowering time, and occasionally scale. One telltale sign of all three of these pests are ants. If you have ants on your succulents, they will be farming and protecting one of them. Snails, slugs, caterpillars and grasshoppers also like agavoids and will have a bit for snacks if they get the chance. The color and size can differ across the agavoids forms and varieties. Some can be bicolor like this ebony flower. They can also be a shade of yellow. The main flower stalk can be short or it can be long. Echeveria are said to be non-toxic to humans as well as animals. Despite them being safe, I would not recommend snacking on agavoids. And that is all for today. I hope this video was useful and if you'd like to add anything or ask a question, you can do so in the comments below. To learn more about succulents, hit the subscribe button or go to succulentgrowingtips.com. Thank you very much for watching.